We're beginning a month-long series on spiritual wisdom and how to use it. So there's many ways we use spiritual wisdom in our lives. Today, my talk title is, How Does God Know What I'm Doing? Do you ever wonder, how does God know what I'm doing? Or maybe you wonder, does God know what I'm doing? <laughs> Could be interesting. So this series of talks is based on chapters in the book Living the Science of Mind, a companion to our textbook that Ernest Holmes, our founder, wrote. And this is very practical wisdom that he gives us. So today's chapter, how does God know what I'm doing? Ernest begins this chapter by talking about a friend of his. It was one of his board of trustees that the gentleman had been sick for several weeks. And when Ernest found out that the guy was sick, he said, well, why didn't you ask for prayer? And the man said, oh, I didn't want to bother God with such a trivial thing as my health. Huh? Ernest said, well, that's a very natural reaction. But it means you don't understand cosmic law. You don't understand God and how God wants good all the time. God is concerned about what we're doing and knows what we're doing. So we're gonna talk about that. Ernest had a real sense of humor. And a lot of people, when they read the textbook, they get bogged down in it. And so we don't really see his sense of humor. But I think this kind of shows his sense of humor. He said, does an, elephant, does an elephant have more life in it than a flea? So that bottom picture is a finger with a flea on it. <laughs> I have to explain it to you. <laughs> so from the standpoint of the divine, of divine intelligence or God, he goes on to say, does a giant sequoia have more importance to God than a rose that grows alongside the road? Isn't it both the tree and the rose that are rooted in the soil of God? And isn't each one of our lives rooted in the divine? That was a talk I did several weeks ago. We're all from God. Traditionally, we would say that we're made in the likeness and image of God. And so I've really hoped that you understood that likeness and image is not God as a big personality in heaven, watching you over the balcony of heaven. But God is a principle. God is a spirit, a presence that is everywhere. And it is from within each of us. And so the nature of God, the unconditional love, the oneness, the wholeness, the perfect health, the completeness, the prosperity, the abundance of life, that's all the nature of God. And so that's the nature of each one of us. Because we are made in that likeness and image of God. Meaning that those God qualities, we would call them, are the same thing as our qualities in life. That's what we can bring forth. But it's our choice. How much of that we want to embrace. How much we want to embody in our life. So Ernest shows his sense of humor here. He says all ideas are brought to fruition through that one power, that one medium, that one God, one presence that's everywhere. We're all using that, whether we use it consciously or unconsciously, to create our world. So what is it that you're creating? I think he continues with his um, sense of humor here, to me anyway. On page 221, he says, a person running a peak, now remember, this was written in the 1920s, okay, 1920s. A person running a peanut stand on some street corner and affirming the presence of activity in his business 
is invoking the same law as the builders of a railroad. We might say a superhighway now or something. Or an empire state building. So the point here that I'm getting from this is that there is no big or small in God. It doesn't matter what it is we're doing. That same divine intelligence is what is driving those ideas in our minds. We're the ones that put limits on what it is we think we can do. Have you ever done that? <laughs> or am I the only one? <laughs> the law, which is God, we talk about God being love and law, two sides of the same coin. It's that power and presence. The law is what runs the universe. We're using that law all the time to create. The love is the impetus behind that to create the good that we're looking for in life. So God is love and law, two sides of the same presence, the same power. But we're all able to use that same presence and power. Do you think God says, oh, this is all the big stuff over here, and here's all the little stuff over here. I won't worry about this. No. That presence and power doesn't see big or little, doesn't see hard or easy. We put into law what it is we want it to do. And the law responds according to our belief, according to our thought. So what are you thinking? And are you aware of what you're thinking? There are no comparisons in spirit. So that's why I say spirit doesn't say, oh, that's too hard for me to do. Or really, why don't you do that tomorrow? Because today I'm tired and I don't want to do that. God doesn't work that way. God is always ready to create. God is always ready to give us what it is that we can dream up. Because there's infinite possibilities for us. And we get to choose from that field of infinite possibilities what it is that we want to create in our lives. Just to show you that there is no comparison in the universe, here's one of the mysteries of life. How can a two-pound box of chocolate cause you to gain five pounds. <laughs> See, there is no comparison here. It's not this creates this. <laughs> it's not equal. So we have to drop that thought of, that's too hard. Spirit could never accomplish that for a little old me. Because what's behind that kind of thought? It's a thought of limitation. And what's behind that thought of limitation? Typically, something about, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to have that much blessing in my life, to have that much prosperity. This is my lot in life. I need to stay beat down here. No. No. Spirit wants to give us everything that we want wants to create good and more good through our life. And we can do that if we open ourselves to it. And if we step into that assurance that what we put out, we're going to get back. And so that's why we want to make sure everything that goes out from us is always good, is always something that we would want to have returned to us. When we have nothing that goes from us, that we wouldn't want to have return to us, then we're living in heaven. One of our core concepts in science of mind is the concept of oneness. Oneness. That there is only one power, one presence. That God is all there is, and God shows up in each and every individual, in each plant, in each part of nature, God is in it all. And we are one with all of that. Because that spirit, that presence is everywhere. 
There's not more concentration of God in one spot in the world than another. Now, I know some people won't want to argue with me, but I feel it more when I go to Sedona. <laughs> it's like, okay, good for you. Enjoy that, but know that that same power is here with you when you're in your home in Parker. There's not less of God here. We still have access to all that power. And it's our minds, isn't it, that opens us up to it or that limits us. So we get to work with our mind. This is a mental science that we work with to make sure that we keep ourselves on the positive, on the affirmative. And I'm not saying don't go to Sedona. If that speaks to your heart, by all means, let yourself go. But you might have the same, the same help if you just get quiet right where you are. Can you see God in all people? Can you see God in all people? When you look at people, do you see that power and presence? That, that joy, that peace, that love? And this is our call to action is to be able to see God in all people, to know that spirit is there in each one. It's really easy, I'm talking about there is no hard or easy in God, but what about in us? It's really easy, isn't it, to see God in that person that loves you, the person that does things for you, that cares for you. And it may not be quite as easy to see God in that coworker that gets under your skin. That neighbor that wants to complain about your yard. Or that plays their music a little too loud. Especially when you want to sit outside and relax. So it's our choice if we're going to see God in that. See spirit in each of those people. We get to choose. And what will we choose? So that's our call to action, is to really work to see God in all people, to recognize that, yes, your experience of being a human is different from mine, but what is driving you is God, is the spirit of God within you, that power, that presence. Because everyone just wants to be loved. We all want to be validated that we are special, and each one of you is very special because you are your own unique expression of God. And God has created you. So this world would not be complete if you weren't here showing up as you show up. Sometimes, some days, I could show up a little better to do God a little more justice. But it's my choice. And it's your choice. And when I choose to see God in other people, all people that I meet, it makes a huge difference in my day, in the way life unfolds for me. So where is God anyway? Is your concept of God the God out in heaven? And is your concept that you can go into your house and shut your door and God won't see you or see what you're doing? I've had that God before. Through the years, my concept of God has changed. And I bet for many of you, your concept of God has changed as well. And so I encourage you to keep thinking, to keep praying, to keep meditating. Let that concept of God change as you change and grow in your spiritual understanding, as you recognize that you could make a different choice. That's the whole premise of our philosophy, change your thinking and change your life. And so if I don't like the way my life is going right now, how can I change my thinking on that? 
I've been working with a woman who has some real problems with her family. And you know, she wants her family to change. And I see it as it's her opportunity to view them different. To see the divine in each one of them. And to see that they're perfect right as they are. And as we begin to accept people right as they are, with all their quirks, then we can begin to see God there. And all of a sudden, they change. Do they really? It's usually our perception of them that changes. But it's our choice. And we're the ones that get to change. It's not, well, Colleen, when you change, then I'm going to feel better. It's really the work that we each get to do. God is in us. God is all around us. God lives through us. We are the expression of God. So let me circle back here. There is no big or small in God. There is no hard or easy in God. There's just what we ask the universe to do. What we ask God to do. And so if God doesn't see anything as too hard or too easy, too big or too small, yes, God is interested in it all. And where is God? The reason I'm asking you where God is goes back to our talk title. Does God know what I'm doing? Well, I think, of course God knows what I'm doing because I am an expression of God. God is within me. God is all around me. So, yes, God knows what I'm thinking. God knows what I'm doing. And that's what's going to create my world. So, I don't want you to think that things are kind of spooky. There's no big or easy in God. With God, no problem is too big, too small. No detail is too small. God knows it all because God is you. God is having your expression, your thought. So see God in all things. Know that God is everywhere, and it's in every person. If I beat you enough with that. <laughs> One more concept I want you to know. God is not Santa Claus. So, you know, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been good or bad. Be good for goodness sakes. That's the creepy part. <laughs> you think God is peering in your window? So God is within us. That's how God knows what we're doing. And God is not, you'll get this talk at Christmas, I think. God is not Santa Claus. It's not the vending machine where we put our wish list in and it comes out. God is there to give us the inspiration each day, to guide us, to love us, and to empower us to create what it is we want. God wants us to be happy. Newsflash, you don't have to be miserable, poor, and think you have nothing in life. God wants you to be fulfilled, to be prosperous, and to be loving and loved. So nothing is a problem for God. Nothing is too big or too small. And God does know what we're doing and what we're thinking because we are the expression of God. We don't live outside of God. So in the midst of that one power, one presence, it knows what's going on. We can limit it or we can open ourselves to it. We do have free will. And so if God, you think of that as like a fire hose, God is always giving, always giving us the power, the ideas, the inspiration. We can grab whatever it is we want. Now, if we want to drive our truck over and set the truck tire on the fire hose, the water is not going to come out. Spirit's not going to come out if we're blocking it. A lot of people block spirit in their life because they can't take that they could really deserve all that. God has to give them. So drive your truck a little further. Let that hose open up and let spirit 
give you everything that you want. Ernest Holmes talks about how God is the mind, is the creativity that makes the mud pies. As a child, did you ever make a mud pie? It's fun. <laughs> Your mother will love it until <laughs> you try to come in the house and bring all the mud in. But it's the same mind that makes the mud pie as the mind of the architect that builds the skyscraper. So it's our choice. How much are we going to let God open us up? How much are we going to be open to, yes, I can do that in life. Yes, I can have that. God always knows what we're doing, what we're thinking, because God is always saying yes to it. Yes, that's the way the universe works. We talked about that last week. There's only one answer the universe gives us. No matter what we say, the universe always says, help me, yes. yes. So if the universe is always saying yes, the universe is God, then God knows what we're doing and God is always saying yes. Yes, because God doesn't judge. That's a good thought. That's a bad thought. That's going to hurt you. God just says yes. We get to choose what it is that we're doing. So there's no big or small in spirit, no hard or easy. It's all God, and it's all available to us. I want to end with this story, the story of the smile. The lady smiled at a sorrowful stranger. The smile made him feel better and caused him to remember a past kindness of a friend. With that memory, he decided to write to his friend and send a thank you note. The friend was so pleased to receive the thank you that he left an extra large tip that day at lunch. The waitress, surprised by the large tip, gave part of it to a man on the street the man on the street was so very grateful, for he had nothing to eat for two days. And after he had finished his dinner, he left for his small, dingy room. He was feeling so warm and satisfied that when he saw the shivering puppy, he picked it up and he took it home to get it warm. The puppy was grateful to be out of the cold. That night, the house where he lived caught on fire. The puppy barked the alarm. He barked and barked until he woke up the whole household and everyone was saved from harm. All of this because a simple, of a simple smile. See that chain reaction. Are you willing to give that smile to someone? To see God in everyone? To know that power and presence is in you for you and as you. Let us pray. I know that as we pause and turn within, God is right there to meet us and greet us every time we go within. God is outside of us and in each person to meet us and greet us, but it's our choice. We get to choose to see God in each person. And so I know that power and presence is everywhere. I speak my word of blessing for each one of us this day, that as we move from this place out into the world, we move with a sense of God being everywhere. We see that face of God in all we do. And we create the world that works for all, the world we want to live in the world of love and joy, because we are one with that power and presence, just as each person we meet is one. We say thank you. Thank you, Spirit, for this truth. Thank you for the power to choose to show up as love this week. We go forth to share our smile and to make a difference. And so it is. Thank you.